Kamusta naman po mga kapatid ang ating paghahanda para sa eventual uh, lifting of our quarantine. Hopefully, kung handa na tayong harapin ang mga challenges ng health issues. At samantalang tayo naman ay naghihintay ng ganyan, tayo naman ay lumalago sa marami nating pangunawa at pagkakaunawa sa maraming katulad sa Biblia. At tulad nitong mga ganitong mga lockdown, may mga crisis, talaga namang napakaraming tanong tungkol sa end times. Ilang beses na tayo nag-preach tungkol dyan, nag-aral tungkol dyan, pero hindi pa rin maubos-ubos. So, dagdagan pa natin ngayon, total talaga namang hindi ako mahilig magturo tungkol dyan sa end times. Kahit sa church, hindi tayo halos uh, nagbibigay ng maraming uh, preaching on that. Kasi mahirap ituro ang end times, kasi mahirap siya maintindihan. Una, metaphorical, uh, mga maraming mga symbolic languages. How can you be dogmatic? How can you be so sure? Pagka nag-aaral uh, ka ng symbolic language, parang poetry, who can say what it really means? Unless tanungin mo yung sumulat ng tula. So, kanya-kanyang interpretation yan. Parang sayaw yan. Who can say what is really meant by a movement? Parang beauty lies in the eyes of the beholder. Parang painting, sino makakapagsabi ano talaga ang ibig sabihin ng painting na yan except yung pintor. Pero yung pintor, hindi mo dapat tanungin yan. Ikaw dapat nang tumingin sa trabaho. Ikaw mag-interpret at kung anong pakahulugan mo doon, yun yun. Kaya complicated ang pag-aaral ng mga sinatawag na end times issues. Because the language used in scripture is very very highly symbolic. Para kang bumabasa ng tula. Pwedeng tatlo ang nagbasa, tatlo ang makita nilang pahulugan. But today, we're going to attempt to offer some alternative uh, kind of reading kesa doon sa mga usual readings. And of course, we're not dogmatic about this. Kung baga yan, parang suggested serving. Kung makakatulong sa yung ma-appreciate yung mga teachings, eh di mabuti. Pero kung hindi at ayaw mo, eh di huwag. Wala namang namimilit. Ito isang excursion, isang picnic pagtatangka na tingnan, munawain yung mga kahulugan ng mga teachings na sinasabi nila may kinalaman sa end times. At tingnan natin kung anong mangyayari kung tinignan natin this kind of way. Ang dami-daming teachings on end times na wala o kulang sa context. Kasi kahit sa New Testament, bigla-bigla na lang lilipat yung writer sa topic that is now associated with end times issues. Pero kulang sa background, kulang sa context, disjointed, at metaphorical and symbolic, pero walang explanation. Tulad ng Thessalonians 4, 14-18. Ang dalas itanong ito, For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Pero itong teaching na ito, bigla na lang sumulpot sa gitna ng chapter 4 ng Thessalonians na walang paliwanag. So kanya-kanyang paliwanag ngayon ng mga tao, kanya-kanyang attempt na idugtong sa mga ibang teachings ng ibang writers, ng ibang books of the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 15, 51-52 is another example. Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. Again, biglang sumulpot itong teaching na ito sa gitna ng chapter 15, or towards the end. Walang explanation, hindi in-expound. So, ano ang pakahulugan nito? Una, Tama ba na i-connecto sa Thessalonians? Magkaiba yung writer, magkaiba yung goal ng writing, at magkaiba yung pinanggagalingan na point of view. So iyan, at marami pang iba, ang nagiging dahilan kaya maraming tanong, maraming interpretation, at maraming, kumbaga, iba nga yan sa interpretation. Dapat kasi kung may ini-interpret ka, di itong tingin ko, kung ayaw mo, wag kanya-kanyang tingin kasi walang sino man sa atin ang nasa posisyon para magsabi yung interpretation and reading niya ang tamang-tama, correct, correct, perfect, perfect. Now, taking these bits of teachings at face value, separate from the big picture, merong big picture kasi na ipopropose tayo, could lead to misreading. 
misinterpretation, misapplication, and confusion. In an attempt to synthesize these fragments of teachings with the main teaching of Jesus' end times, in an attempt to offer an integrative reading of such teachings, we shall situate all these bits of teachings in context and within the framework of the master plan, Jesus' teaching in Matthew 24. In other words, katulad ng ating mga binanggit, binasa natin sa Thessalonians, sa Corinthians, at mamaya marami pang iba, tutapotake, hiwa-hiwalay, lumulutang sa ere. Ngayon, ang ating attempt para bigyan siya ng sensible reading, this is only an attempt, and we're not dogmatic about it. Isisituate natin siya sa kwadro ng Matthew 24. Kasi yung Matthew 24, si Jesus ang may turo, siya ang may sabi. So, dapat siya ang gawing reference. At buong-buo ang kwento niya sa Matthew 24, ngayon, sisikapin natin ipasok sa pagitan ng mga verses ng Matthew 24 in an attempt to offer these many different verses as explanation as realization of Jesus' prophecy. Kung makakatulong sa ating ma-appreciate ang kabutihan ng Diyos, mabuti. Kung hindi, at lalo kayo malilito, eh, huwag yung pansinin ang reading na ito. But let us be emphatic that Jesus categorically stated that all the end times events he prophesied would happen soon within the earthly lifetime of his original hearers. So huwag natin kakalimutan yan ha, sa pagbabasa at pag attempt nating bigyan ng meaning yung mga tinatawag nila mga end times verses na ang end times ni Jesus sa Matthew 24, lahat ng sinabi niyang magaganap, supposedly dapat yun maganap sa lifetime ng kanyang hearers. Kasi sabi niya sa Matthew 24, 34, Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. So ngayon, sa oras natin, tinitingnan natin yung end times sa turo ni Jesus sa Matthew 24, lahat yon tapos na. And we are attacking this issue from this point of view, na yung Matthew 24 prophecies ng end times ni Jesus, tapos na. Kasi sabi niya sa mga nakikinig sa kanya, hindi kayo lahat aabutan ng kamatayan. Matutupad ang lahat ng ito in your lifetime, at least in the lifetime of some of you. So clear, natapos na yon. And because yun ang ating premise, hahanapin natin at pagtatagnitagniin ang lahat ng nangyari na from AD 33, panahon ni Jesus, to AD 73, 40 years later, the time of the generation of Jesus as hearers. Hahanapin yung mga tumutugma at tatakpat sa signs na sinabi ni Jesus na naganap lahat soon thereafter and now definitely long ago. In other words, pag sinabi ni Jesus na eto yung mga mangyayari, eto, 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 tapos marami mga iba-ibang verses sa New Testament na kung saan-saan ang galing, hahanapan natin ang sisingitan na related sa sinabi ni Jesus, related sa sinabi ni Jesus, related na ipopropose natin na ito ang kahulugan ng sinabi o ito ang katuparan ng sinabi para yung maraming hiwahiwalay na verses at yung frame ng Matthew 24 magbe-blend into one story. Yung ibig sabihin natin na master plan, master story of Jesus according to Matthew 24. Now, sariwain natin, bagamat ito'y mabilisan lang survey, yung end times according to Jesus. Matthew 24, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. So, yung buildings ng temple ang topic ng Matthew 24. Do you see all these things? He asked. Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. So, let us be clear. The end of the temple, the end of the age of the temple, yung tinatawag na end times. Ang mag -e end yung temple. Ang mag -e end yung age of the temple, yung panahon ng temple, na siya ang uso at siya ang nakakapanaig sa buhay ng mga Israelites. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? 
So the sign of the end of the temple or the age of the temple and the sign of Jesus' coming magkasama sa kwento. Meaning, the end of the age of the temple and the coming of Jesus are one and the same event. Are to happen in the same age or period or time frame. Kasi dugtong-dugtong, isang dakot lang sa kwento nila. Hindi hiwa-hiwalay. Related. Hindi naman sila mangyayari on the same hour or the same day, but on the same period, on the same historical era. So, let's go on. Dahil ni sa isa ni Jesus ang mga magiging signs of the age or signs of the end of the age. Fake messiahs, wars, persecution. Pa sabi niya, but one who stands firm to the end, and this is the end of the hardships, not the end of the planet, will be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. Remember, we are looking for things that could have been the fulfillment of these prophecies within their lifetime. And you, we can only say that the fulfillment that the gospel was preached in the whole world within their lifetime was Pentecost. Kasi sa Pentecost, nandun lahat ang mga tao from the known world, from the countries, which in Jewish language was the whole world, yung napakarami mga Jews na nakatira sa iba't ibang lugar na nandun sa Pentecost, sa fiesta. So, nag-preach noon si Peter at ang nangyaring fulfillment ng gospel of the kingdom being preached to the whole world during their lifetime was the preaching at Pentecost. So, we propose, if you like to take it, na naganap yung preaching na yan to the ends of the world noong Pentecost. Kasi yun ang nangyari within the lifetime of Jesus' hearers. E sabi ni Jesus, lahat ito mangyayari sa inyong lifetime. Then, let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains, sabi ni Jesus. So clear, para sa Judeans ng generation na yon ang message o yung warning. Hindi ito para sa ibang lahi, sa ibang panahon, hindi ito para sa mga Pilipino today, hindi para sa mga Koreano o Hapon today, kasi yung Judeans ang sinabihan that you who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Sila ang kausap. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. So, para sa Sabbath observing people ito. Para sa Jews ito sa panahong yun. Yung mga kwento at warning ng end times na yan. For as lightning that comes from the east is visible even in the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. So, ano mga lightning-lightning effect ang nangyari? na nangyari sa lifetime ng hearers ni Jesus. Suggested fulfillment. Take it kung gusto nyo, kaya nyo wag. Matthew 28, 2-4 There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. So yung mention of lightning, hindi naman kailangan yung one is to one correspondence na talagang lightning na lightning na lightning ang mangyayari. Kundi may lightning effect. And if you like to take it, dahil ang tanong ng iba, paano yung second coming ni Jesus hindi pa nangyayari? Eh gusto mo ba na ang first coming ni Jesus, yung Pasko, yung isinilang siya? Okay. So nawala siya, umalis siya nung namatay siya sa cross, tama? Ayaw mo pa bang second coming yung nabuhay siya wala sa kamatayan? Bumalik siya sa kanyang mga disciples? Kung gusto mong second coming yun, hindi naganap na. Pero kung ayaw mo pa, hindi, hindi pa nagaganap. Bahala ka. Matthew 24, 29, sa pagpapatuloy ng Matthew 24 main story, Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Sabi ni Jesus, ito daw ang sign ng end times. Isa sa mga signs. Sa Joel's prophecy, chapter 2, 28-32, sabi ni Joel, ito ang sabi ng Diyos na mangyayari. Sa end times daw, sabi ni Joel, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. And your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. What days? The end days. 
I will show wonders in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. So lahat ng sinabi ni Joel, sinabi din ni Jesus, mangyayari before the coming of that great day. Tapos, very interestingly, at Pentecost, nung nagsalita in different tongues of the world, known languages, yung mga disciples, at napagkamalan silang laseng, sabi ni Peter, Acts 2, 14-17, This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people, and I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. So sinabi ni Jesus, yung prophecy na ito na magiging senyales ng end times. Tapos sinabi ni Joel, yung prophecy, the same prophecy, na magiging senyales ng end times. Tapos biglang sinabi ni Peter sa Acts chapter 2, yung sinabi ni Joel, na actually sinabi rin ni Jesus, ito na ngayong nangyayari ngayon, today ito yung katuparan. Dumating ang Holy Spirit, we are speaking in the tongues of the world to be understood by the many people who speak other languages. Ito ang sign ng great and glorious day of the Lord. Tatlong iba-ibang sources talking about the same thing. And Peter definitively saying, ito na yung end, ito na yung day of the Lord, at ito yung sign na nakikita nyo today ngayong Pentecost. Sa pagpapatuloy ng Matthew 24, Then will appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and all the peoples of the earth will mourn when they see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. But what happened and who came during the time of that generation that heard Jesus speak? Acts 2, 2 to 3, may dumating. Sino ang dumating? Kasi ito lang yung dumating equivalent in power and glory and magnitude doon sa sinabi ni Jesus. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. So sinabi ni Jesus, in your lifetime ang yayari ito. Darating ako, great power, great glory, lightning, etc., etc. Tapos ang dumating sa Acts, na sabi ni Peter na itong nangyari ngayong Pentecost, ito na yung end times na yan, ito na yung great day of the Lord, ang dumating, the Holy Spirit. John 14, 16-31, Jesus promises the Holy Spirit. Sabi niya, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Father will send in my name. So, yung mong sinasabi ni Jesus that you will see me is the same as seeing the tongues of fire which represented the Holy Spirit. Sabi ni Jesus, I will never leave you. Sasamahan ko kayo. Tapos sabi niya, I will ask the Father to send you the Holy Spirit na samahan kayo. So yung bang sinatawag na darating si Lord in great glory, may sound, merong mga glorious accompaniment, yung ba yung pagdating ng Holy Spirit ng Pentecost? Na sinabi ni Peter, ito na yung great day of the Lord. At Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came in Jesus' name. If you like to take that, take that. Kung ayaw mo, di wag. Pero yun ang dumating sa lifetime nila. Matthew 24 And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call, another sign. Pero sa Acts 2, verse 2, Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Ito ang dumating na loud trumpet call in their lifetime, yung kasamang sound ng Holy Spirit. Matthew 24 pa rin. And they will gather his elect from the four winds, from one end of the heavens to the other. Ang iniisip ng iba talagang literal United Nations, iipunin sa isang lugar. Pero nung Acts 2.5, at Pentecost, now they were staying in Jerusalem, 
God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. So, anong natupad during their lifetime na God will gather His elect from the four winds? Nandun sa Jerusalem ang pagkaramaraming Jews from all over the world representing the end of the world, representing all the corners of the world. That was what happened during their lifetime. Back to Matthew 24. Truly I tell you, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. How can I be more emphatic than that? Sabi ni Jesus, lahat ng senyales na ito mangyayari sa panahon nyo, makikita nyo. Kaya naman, humanap tayo ng mga nangyari sa panahon nila na pwedeng itapat, itumbas, o itabi sa mga sinabi ni Jesus. Hindi natin yung pinipilit kung ayaw nyo, pero pinopropose natin, consider it. The end of the age, the end of the age of the temple, the end of the temple building an institution, and the coming of Jesus would all happen in their generation, within the lifetime of Jesus' original hearers. Kaya nagdidisapon yung iba na inaantay nila yung darating si Jesus, paano nga naman kung nangyari na pala sa generation nila? E sabi ni Jesus, sa hatang ito mangyayari sa panahon nyo. The temple should be destroyed before 40 years had passed after Jesus prophesied it. Kasi sabi niya, in your lifetime, the temple will be destroyed. And sure enough, in AD 72, the temple with the whole of Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans. Fire, physical destruction, tinumbag, ginuho ang mga building. At yung pinakamahalagang artifact sa loob ng temple, yung menorah, symbol of their faith, yan ay kinalad God, kinuha din nila sa Rome, binuhat nila, inuwi sa Rome, at yung event na ito is immortalized, commemorated, sa Ark of Titus na nasa city of Rome. Makikita yung mga carving na yan kasama sa pag-commemorate nila ang pagkuha sa menorah. Natupad ang lahat ng sinabi ni Jesus within the lifetime of His original hearers. Therefore, Jesus should come within their generation. Paano yun? Luke 24. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Ito yung, nung si Jesus ay bumalik mula sa kamatayan. Jesus came back from the dead. Ayaw mo pa bang second coming yun? First coming, Pasko. Second coming, Pasko ng pagkabuhay. Ayaw mo pa ba nun? John 14, 26 But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Jesus came back through the Holy Spirit. Ayaw mo pa ba nun? Samantalang sabi naman niya, hindi ko kayo iiwan, ipapadala ko ang Holy Spirit, sasamahan kayo. So, Jesus came back another way through the Holy Spirit within their lifetime because it happened at Pentecost. Mark 16, 9-14 When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, He appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Afterward, Jesus appeared in a different form to two of them while they were walking in the country. Later, Jesus appeared to the eleven as they were eating. He rebuked them for their lack of faith and their stubborn refusal to believe those who had seen Him after He had risen. So, Jesus returned. Jesus had come again. Ayaw mo pa ba nun? 1 Corinthians 15, 3-8 Christ died. He was buried. He was raised on the third day. He appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Take note, Mary Magdalene was omitted by the writer. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, sabi ni Paul. So Jesus returned to all. Jesus came again. That would have been so glorious. Ayaw mo ba na Jesus returned? Eh, yun nga mga sinabi. Bumalik siya. If you would take this argument, if you would take this uh, offered reading, 
matagal nang natapos. Matagal nang tapos. By now, sobrang tagal nang tapos yung end times. Pero kung ayaw mo pa rin nun, isipin mo kapatid, Jesus comes at any time to whoever believes and accepts Him. So kung gusto mong yun pa ang second coming mo, kung hindi pa sapat yung nangyari nung first century, it happens. It keeps happening all the time when people believe Him and accept Him. John 1.12 Yet to all who did receive Him, to those who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. So Jesus comes to you when you believe in Him. Matthew 18.20 Sabi pa niya, Where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. So Jesus comes at the fellowship. Actually, ang daming dating ni Jesus. Hindi lang dalawa. Napakarami. Meron lang talaga kasi nag-develop ng theology na yan na sobrang parang cinematically scripted. At gustong gusto ng lahat yun kasi may mga climax. Pero yung mga reading na yan, yung mga traditional interpretation of the end times, ang daming problema niyan. Ang daming theological problems. Sobra na lang tayo na condition to accept the approach of interpreting scripture na ini-ignore natin. Nagbubulag-bulaga tayo sa napakaraming theological problems ng traditional reading and interpretation of end times. But that is another story. Back to Matthew 24. As it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Dahil futurist, ang tingin ng marami, ito may party, ito yung mayroong malaking event, ito may masaya. Sabi nila, ayan, babalik na si Jesus, babalik na si Jesus. But, Pentecost was like this, festive. Yung hindi describe dito, people are eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. Yun ang Pentecost, piesta, piesta, piesta. At dun dumating yung Holy Spirit. Matthew 24, 40 Sa patuloy ni Jesus, ha, sa magiging signs of the end. Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. May mga nagkatawag dito na rapture, kung iba no, anong mga tawag nila dito. Pero remember, kasama ito sa mga natapos na nung panahon ng original hearers ni Jesus. This too should have happened within the time frame and that period within their generation. The so-called rapture would have happened in and around the time of the destruction of the temple because they would all happen during the time of the original hearers. But what happened? Ano mga nawala at mga nag-disappear na mga events ang nangyari in that time period? Acts 8.39 when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again. So si Philip, nawala, matapos niyang ibaptize yung Ethiopian official. Gusto mo bang yun ay sign, yung may nawala? Ayan yan, kung ayaw mo, wag. Luke 24, 31, yung Emmaus duo, yung dalawang tao sa Emmaus, then their eyes were opened and they recognized Jesus, and he disappeared. From their sight. Ayan, may nawala na naman. Luke 24, 51. While he was blessing them, meaning the disciples, he left them and he was taken up into heaven. O ayan, meron na namang nawala. May kinuha na naman. At sa 2 Corinthians 12, 2, I know a man in Christ who, 14 years ago, was caught up to the third heaven. So ito yung si Paul naman na nawala, nagpunta sa third heaven. Kung gusto mong i-take yan, na yun yung one is taken, one is left. Although, hindi naman one is two ng correspondence na exactong exacto. Take it. If you don't like to take it, then don't. How about the end times according to Peter and Paul? 1 Peter 3, 19-20 After being made alive, meaning after the resurrection, he went and made proclamation to the imprisoned spirits to those who were disobedient long ago when God waited patiently in the days of Noah while the ark was being built. So Jesus now went to those who had been judged, who had died long ago. It means he went to the world of the dead, to the underworld. So Jesus preached to the imprisoned spirits in the earth's lower regions. When he died, he went there or after he rose, 
he went there before showing himself to the disciples and to Mary. Jesus rescued those who perished for disobedience, brought them up with him, and raised them from death. This is another mysterious teaching, but we will read it within the framework of Matthew 24, the master plan of Jesus about the end times. Ephesians 4, 8-10 to When he, referring to Jesus, ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? So Jesus, as implied or as directly stated, no matter how you read it, by Ephesians 4, Jesus went down to the lower earthly regions. Hindi naman define kung ano. He took many captives of the lower earthly regions and ascended on high and took those captives with him. So lumusong siya, kinuha niya yung mga nakakulong sa ilalim at sa pag-akyat niya, dinala niya pataas. Ephesians 4, 8 to 10 He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. Many read this as the dead were preached to by Jesus. The captives of death were set free by Jesus, set free and taken up with him. 1 Thessalonians 4, 14-18 We who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. So yan daw mga buhay pa sa pagdating ni Jesus ay hindi mauna na mag-glorify kesa doon sa mga naunang namatay na nung unang panahon na nananalig sa Diyos. For the Lord Himself will come down from heaven with a loud command and with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. So ina-equate ba natin ito doon sa sound ng Pentecost? And the dead in Christ will rise first. What happened in their lifetime that the dead in Christ rose? Na hinihintay pa ng marami sa future time na magbabangon daw yung mga patay na believer kay Jesus? Matthew 27, 52-53 The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tomb after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. So yung pagbangon ng mga naniniwala kay Jesus na namatay nung una pa ay nangyari din sa lifetime nila. Pagkamatay ni Jesus, nakawala ang mga ito mula sa kalakilibingan at pagkabuhay ni Jesus at ay ang mga ito ay nagpasukan sa siyudad at ipinakita mga sarili nila sa napakaraming mga saksi. So, nangyari na rin ito in their lifetime. Remember, naghahanap tayo ng mga katumbas na pwedeng itabi sa mga prophecies ni Jesus na naganap lahat sa panahon ng kanyang original hearers. 1 Thessalonians 4, 14-18 After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Meron bang naganap nung palahon nila ng first generation hearers na ito na nag-meet kay Lord? Acts 7, 55-60 But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God. And Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Ito ba ay pwedeng ihambing, itong basitabi? You decide. 1 Corinthians 15, 51-58 Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. Ayan na naman yung trumpet, yung sound na naman, na pinopropose natin na equal ba yan, katabi, katumbas ng sound sa Pentecost, nung dumating ang Holy Spirit. Pero ano daw mangyayari? Magbabago daw sila. Ano nangyaring pagbabago sa panahon ng mga first century believers? The disciples were changed. What changed? Acts 2, 6-8 When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. 
utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Na iba ang mga disciples ng Pentecost at hindi lang sila naging linguist. Na iba ang kanilang spiritu. Mula sa mga nagtatagong parang, parang mga dagadong sa upper room, naglabasan sila ng ubod tapang. Mula sa mga takot na takot mamatay, ngayon iniaalay nila ang kanilang buhay sa gawain ng Panginoon. Mula sa mga kiming-kimi at mga kinakabahan, mga matatapang sila, they changed. If you like to take that as we will be changed, as the meaning or interpretation of it, it's up to you. 1 Corinthians 15, 51-58 For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. Anong nangyari sa lifetime nila? Matthew 27, 50-53 And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, He gave up His Spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tomb after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. As we have already previously read, naganap din yun, nagbango na na ang mga patay sa panahon nila. Taking these bits of teachings at face value, separate from the big picture of Matthew 24, could lead to misreading, misinterpretation, misapplication, and confusion. So what we try to do is to situate all these bits of teachings in context. Within the framework of the master plan, Jesus is teaching in Matthew 24 about the end times. Now, we should take note that the prophecy and fulfillment need not be literal and need not be on a one-is-to-one -one correspondence. Ibig sabihin, hindi lang carbon copy or exact mirror reflection yung magiging katuparan nun. Kasi nga, matalinghaga ang salita, poetic, it was symbolic, metaphorical, kaya hindi naman pwedeng napaka one-is-to-one -one correspondence ng kanyang magiging katuparan. According to Jesus, the end of the age and all its attendant signs, even His coming in glory, would happen within the earthly lifetime of His original hearers. Kaya ang sinikap natin gawin was to understand and interpret teachings on end times in many other books of scripture by situating them all within the Jesus Master teaching, within the Master plan, Matthew 24. Ang ginawa natin ay pagbibigay ng isang uh, alternative reading and interpretation of Matthew 24. Dahil sabi ni Jesus, ang lahat ay magaganap sa lifetime ng kanyang hearers. Naghanap tayo ng mga naganap sa lifetime ng mga hearers na yon na pwedeng itapat, itumbas, o itabi sa mga sinabi ni Jesus sa mga signs at yan ang mga in natin. The study of end times is very, very masalimuot. It is full of many blank spaces. It is full of many silences. Kaya hindi pwede maging dogmatic ang sino man, lalong-lalo ang inyong lingkod. Ito isa lamang na proposal, suggested serving sa pag-unawa at pag-apply. At kung ito ay ating tatanggapin, makakapagpaluwag ng ating dibdib na tapos na ang lahat ng mga paghihirap na yan ang sinabi sa Matthew 24, matatanggal na yung mga takot natin tuwing meron na lang bulka na puputok, tuwing merong tsunami, tuwing merong sakit na kumakala, tuwing may gera, Laging iniisip natin, ayan, end times na, end times na. At sinikap natin idiin na according to Jesus, lahat ng end times na yon is not the end of the planet, it's not the end of life on earth, it's the end of the temple, the end of the age of the temple. At kakambal nun yung mga signs na sinabi niya na binigyan natin ang katumbas na talagang naganap sa panahon nila. At ang nais lang nating maiwan na talagang main message is, Yung Matthew 24, the end of the age of the temple, is already done. Huwag na tayong matakot doon. Huwag na natin punoy ng buhay natin ang mga nervyos at mga pangamba. At nagsikap tayong humanap sa mga naganap sa lifetime ng mga original hearers 
na pwedeng itumbas, itabi sa sinabi ni Jesus na signs. This is not dogmatic. This is not final. The discourse is liquid. Patuloy tayong mag-aral. Pero nawa, ang maging talab, epekto, bunga ng pag-aral natin ay kapayapaan, katahimikan ng loob, at patuloy na pag-asa. Yung kung mga madi-disappoint ka na, ano, tumating na ba si Jesus, nag-second coming na ba? Ayaw mo ba nun? Hindi nga second, third, fourth, fifth, ang daming ang beses. And anytime, when two or three are gathered in His name, He comes, He is there. So patuloy siyang pabalik-balik, patuloy siyang dumadating. At yung Holy Spirit, ipinadala niya na representative. At hindi lang tayo pupunta sa templong bato. Tayo na ang ginawang templo ng Holy Spirit. So, kasama na natin ang Holy Spirit, meaning kasama natin si Jesus na kinakatawa ng Holy Spirit forever and every time and any time that we like to be with Jesus. Nawa kahit may mga pagkakaiba ng mga opinion sa pagbabasa ng mga end times issues na ito, magkaisa tayo sa isang katotohanan. Mahal tayo ng Diyos, minahal tayo ng Diyos through His Son Jesus. This Son Jesus is living now to intercede for us, to love us, and the Holy Spirit was sent by the Lord Jesus, to be with us, to be our guide, to be our companion. God bless everyone.